It has been one year since the horrific mass shooting that claimed the lives of 19 children and two adults at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. ABC News contributor Maria Elena Salinas has the story of two brave young survivors who were honored for calling 911 that fateful day and the challenges that they continue to face as they look ahead. The award for Texas Nina Kid Hero of the Year goes to Mia Cerillo and Chloe Torres. Nearly a year after the mass shooting at Robb Elementary, these two survivors received an award for their heroic calls to 911. Peabody County 911. In a school shoot, 1870, there's a lot of dead bodies. Can you send a police to my room now? Mia and Chloe were in room 112 when an 18-year-old gunman shot and killed their two teachers and several classmates. The girls described their harrowing experience in FBI interviews shortly after the shooting, the video obtained by ABC News. Right, when he came in, everybody was screaming. He said, good night, and he started shooting everybody. He tried to shoot at me, and I like, faked that he shot me, and I like, just fell down. She fell down and smeared herself with her classmates' blood. Mia's courage is, is, is unbelievable. How did it occur to her to do what she did to avoid becoming another mm. victim? She said basically she, was, she didn't want to die. She wasn't ready. So she was trying to fight for her life. At the hospital after the shooting, doctors discovered bullet shrapnel all over Mia's body. She kept complaining about her hair burning. Yeah. So we were like looking through it, maybe like a wound or something. So we got a big sheet from the hospital and she kind of like shook it off and all the bullet fragments started coming out. Doctors told the Cerrillos that the bullet pieces would eventually work their way out. Recently, she's been complaining about her arm hurting, her back hurting more than usual. And I took her to her doctor and uh, we went to go get x-rays and instead of them pushing out, they're going in. A stark reminder of Mia's ordeal are her school belongings, which the FBI returned to her family. What goes through your mind when you see all these things? I want to understand what she went through. I guess I just keep it to, to look at it and know that my daughter's brave. That yeah, she went through something like really, really bad and she survived. Chloe's father, Ruben Torres, shared that despite getting counseling for his daughter, recovery hasn't been easy. She does have, again, you know, survivor's guilt, them and other students in there, but you cannot harp on that. As both girls deal with post-traumatic stress disorder, they find comfort getting together with other survivors and having slumber parties. So her and the survivors, some of the girls come over, they spend the night. When they get together, it's like nothing ever happened, you know? Yeah. It's like... They, got, they get to act like kids again. Yeah, they act like kids. Doris believes these gatherings have been helpful as the girls continue to process the tragedy. They talk about him almost every time they get together, you know, little things that happen that they remember, you know, that happen in there. And at the Texas Public Safety Conference recently, the families finally taking in support for the girls and their heroic actions that day. We have our kids, but it still hurts that they lost their friends and we just want them to be happy and move forward. We will never forget what they went through and what the kids went through, but just moving forward for them is for their, for their sake. Uh, just incredible reporting by mm -hmm. ABC News correspondent Maria Alina Salinas. You join us now from Uvalde, Texas. You have been following the story and these families for a year now, really getting to know them. How are these two girls doing? Well, as you can imagine, these poor girls and uh, 10 of them that survived, girls and boys that survived that, they're struggling. They're struggling because they have some physical wounds. All of them have emotional wounds. And I think one of the things that stood out to me uh, from these girls is that they are true heroes. I mean, just to react so fast, thinking about let's grab the phone. It was Eva Mireles, their teacher's phone, making that 911 call, making sure that they did everything possible to be able to save their friends, their teachers, and themselves. But, you know, they are really struggling to try to be normal kids. And I think that's one of the things that the families are also trying to do, is just bring us more, as much normality as they possibly can to their kids' lives. And one example of that is that today, for example, is Mia's brother's birthday. And the 
entire family was struggling with whether they should celebrate or not. So including their brother, they asked Mia, are you okay if we celebrate his birthday? And she said, of course, I'm okay with that. But it, it, it is a true struggle for them. Some of them went back to school. Some of them are doing online schooling. And they're living, again, with the physical scars, but also the emotional scars. All right, Maria, Elena, Salinas, thank you so much for your reporting there. We appreciate it. Thank you. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.